Lord God, we just thank you for, for this opportunity to be in your presence, for this opportunity to be in the house of miracles, Lord God, to be in your house. And we know, Lord God, that you are doing greater things, mightier things in our lives and in our church and our, in our communities. And we just pray, continue it, continue the work. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God's good, amen? Amen. Yes. I'll tell you what, uh, let's see. Uh, Tim's right there. Tim, just stand up, and uh, we'll pray right now. We don't want to leave out of here and forget. We, won't, we wouldn't do that, but just in case, we want to pray now. I will just say that Tim is, uh, I consider him a friend and uh, just a huge blessing. He's been with us since late August. And uh, he's going to continue to be with us. Amen. And uh, well, we just appreciate Tim. Amen. And uh, I mean that, Tim. We do appreciate you. And, and uh, as a musician, but also as a friend. And uh, but right now, let's just pray. Lord, we just pray for Tim's uh, carpal tunnel for the, this hand. Uh, and as people are laying hands on him, we just pray healing in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would strengthen him physically, strengthen his spirit, and just... Uh, just uh, to continue what you you have and are doing in Tim's life. And we pray healing upon his hand in the name of Jesus. We know you have far more for Tim's life, including musically. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. 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 If you will turn to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Last week, we started uh, a, mess, a series called Up Against a Mountain, and yes, I'm taking that off of Dana's book, and uh, last week we had an incredible time, amen, it was good. Uh, I actually like that style, a little bit of interview, and Dana uh, bringing the meat of the, the word last week, and uh, did an excellent, Dana did an excellent, excellent job. Uh, I heard she had a, a whole bunch of grandkids over last night, and... Uh, what I heard, I'm not, but she did a great job, amen, uh, thank you, we appreciate Dana and Randy, and uh, but today is part two, and we're going to be looking at John chapter 11, but look at this, that graphic, alive to thrive, alive to thrive, so the subtitle is, is I'm alive, and uh, listen, if you're sitting here today, and, and you're not killed over, and you're not in the hospital anymore, and you're, you're uh, alive. And, and I think too many times in our lives, we, we, if we're not careful, we, we get down and out. We look at all the things we don't have. We look at uh, what other people have, but we're alive. Yeah. And I pray, here's my, here's my, well, my goal, I'd say God's goal, I believe, is when we walk out the doors of this sanctuary, this church, and this building, and, in this property this week, we're going to live more alive Amen. than ever before. So you turn, hold your place, John chapter 11. We'll put it up there. Uh, Fabian does a great job of allowing it up there in just a moment. But just a reminder, we are messed up people. By the way, now Fabian's being trained on the lights. He's being trained on the soundboard. Uh, he's being trained to do the help with the website. The upside, well, upside. The website was updated last night. So 10-year-old Fabian, and he's trained like a 20 or 30-year-old. Good job, Fabian. We start them young and keep them on the roll. Amen? We are messed up people connecting to a perfect, loving God that is transforming our lives, and we are proclaiming of what he is doing. Man, I just heard Tim's last night sharing a little bit of his testimony. I tell you, we got some messed up people in this place. But you know what? We got a powerful God that's transforming lives. Amen transforming our lives. Listen, with us in this room even now and others, listen, in eight months, by August, end of August, you, you won't recognize this place. It's going to continue to get more powerful in God's presence. This worship team that's phenomenal is going to keep getting better. The ministry is going to continue to get better. Listen, I want to keep getting, uh, you have to get more close because uh, our associate here, uh, Norm, keeps dressing so good and nice. He has, uh, I sh when I was helping him unpack or unload the truck, man, he had like suits and suits. I was like, Norm, you can't be wearing those now. I, 
I gotta get some bonuses or something to get some nice suits like that. <clears throat> but uh, we had to travel around as a missionary, had to look nice. Uh, and uh, so anyways, but praise God, right, Norm? And uh, he got some nice clothes, and uh, but I had some birthday money, so my wife picked out a nice new coat and uh, pants. Uh, if you want to, you might hear it through the grapevine, but I, I came home late on Tuesday night from another job and had a big hole in my pants. So uh, <laughs> thankfully my shirt was, uh, I had my shirt untucked. And so I don't think uh, anybody's, you know, I was good, but I had to buy, got to buy some new clothes. I'm one of those, uh, I think Johnny said he's the same way. We wear them until they're falling off and, and they're toast, 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 they're done. So I have some new clothes, amen. And so I want to say this too, is since rededication service, I tell you what, every week tends to get more powerful, more anointed, yes. just more, I mean, just incredible. Yes. And we talked about up against the mountain last week, and I had some mountains come my way last week. Uh, you know, sometimes when you preach it, you have to live it that week, you know, you've already lived it. And I was talking to a music director a few weeks ago, and, and he was like, Man, I'm, I'm working hard, and these new challenges are coming up. I'm not going to talk about all we said, but he was talking about new challenges. I said, well, here's the thing. God is preparing uh, Bobby and myself and, and all others in here, preparing us to love and care for more people. But what happens is God is not when they come and they train you. He trains you and builds you, gives you thicker skin and helps you grow so you're ready for more people. I know Bobby was thanking God the whole time. All right? I mean, and uh, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes we're asking, why God? But I want to share this quick story. This is from the Daily Bread. How many ever read the Daily Bread? All right. A bar of iron is worth $2.50. When wrought into horseshoe, it's worth $5. If made into needles, it's worth $175. If into penknife blades, it is worth $1,625. If made into springs for watches, it's worth $125,000. What a trial by fire that bar must undergo to be worth this. But the more it is manipulated and the more it is hammered and, and passed through heat and beaten and pounded and polished, the greater its value. How many feel like you've been beaten and gone through the fire? And, and uh, how many feel like God sent some people in your, in your workplace or your, or your neighborhood or put, send people your way that, that just, uh, how can I put it, just build you up? You know, just, just remember God. Sometimes we say that's the, the devil causing this. Man, sometimes we, people or will think, man, why is this happening to me? Sometimes God is allowing it or having it happen to what? Make us stronger. See, we are wondering about the trials through which we are passing with impatient heart. Or are we saying, how long? How long, Lord? The heat of the flame and the blows of the hammer are necessary if we are to be more than an unpolished rough bar of iron. God's all-wise plan, though it calls for the fire, produces the valuable Watch spring maturity. See, I believe many here this morning and those that have been watched the, the podcast, listen to the podcast or watch the video, I am impressed. Jerry has put the video of every service since January 12th. Amen. Good job, Jerry. One week he put it on a super quality HD. We looked like we were coming out of the screen quality. And it took like 10 hours to download. So we went back to regular quality. Um, I mean, I forgot what week that was, but I watched it. I was like, man, that, is, that looks incredible. But we're not going to ask him to spend 10 hours doing that. He did. Thank you, Jerry, for that one week. It was good. But listen to John chapter 11. Listen to the word. But I believe in this room that there's many that are saying and believing. They are wanting to see more people reached. They're wanting to see a greater purpose, greater destiny in, in our own lives. And, uh, but we understand that it takes uh, us being uh, beaten up a little bit. It takes us getting stronger and more character in, this, uh, in our lives. And it's nothing that we want to say, yes, yes, beat us up some more. But no, it's, uh, hey, yeah. But, uh, 
that was good. That's why right. she's Sandy. I told her before service, you know. <laughs> but but for us to to rise to victory, to handle bigger mountains. I think about this, and this is a little extra. Is that I think about when they're all on the lake in the storm. Uh, they're on the boat, the disciples, and Jesus isn't with them at the moment. And, uh, and it's dark, and it's probably raining, and it's just a storm's hitting, and and uh, they're they're you know getting they're afraid of the storm of the mountain. Their mountain's a storm, and they see it what they think is a ghost, but no, it's uh, Jesus, soft in the distance. And Jesus says it's them, and and what happens is is uh, Peter says, "Is if that's you, Jesus? If it's you, tell me to walk." And he starts walking on the water. He starts walking out. And what does Jesus? What does God want us to do is begin to walk out on faith. Amen. For that time we're in his presence. They were in his presence day in and day out. His disciples, they were with him in physical form. And what happened? When did Peter start to sink? He started to look at his storm. He started to look at the water. And he probably listened to even his friends, the disciples. And they started to say, how are you doing that? How do you know that's Jesus? And he started to sink. Listen, same thing happened in our lives. We'll hear people say how do you know that's what God's telling you? How do you? Listen, listen uh, you just say, I'm, my eyes are on Jesus. Amen. I'm taking another step. Amen. Here's the scary part is that Jesus doesn't tell us every, the whole film or the whole picture or the, every, the whole vision. He'll tell us one step, a little bit of time. And the next thing, we'll look back and we've kind of overcome that storm. We've overcome that mountain. And so I encourage us to take one step at a time. John chapter 11, we're looking at uh, uh, Lazarus and uh, the story uh, uh, of rising from the dead. But I won't give everything away yet. And if you know the story, you'll still be excited. God's word is exciting. Verse 1, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When, the, when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it's for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. I want you to catch that. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed there, stayed where he was two more days. I'll give the point and, and, and reinforce that in just a moment. Then he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Verse 11, after he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. So, verse 14, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. They thought he was asleep. And for your sake, I am glad I am not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. I'm going to stop there for just a moment. I encourage you to read the whole chapter. I'm going to share some of the verses with the different points. And then at the very end, we're going to dramatize the end part of this. Well, actually the whole part, but mainly the end part. But I want to sketch down. We're going to go over to five points this morning. And I want you to catch these. Look at these verses. First one, recognize your mountain. Recognize it for what it is. And here we see, now a man la named Lazarus was sick. A man named, now he was, when I look at this, if you read it initially, sometimes uh, when I'm sick, I, st I still keep going. I, I seldom tap out. So, I mean, I, I, a matter of fact, I've never tapped out from being at church uh, about a month ago or so. I was, I was actually pretty sick. I just didn't need anything. I just... I was just drinking water, made it through service. I didn't say anything. Well, I think I said something to Norm, but no one else. And, uh, and you know, but the way I read, and you'll see, certainly he was sick, sick. He was deathly sick. 
He was up against the mountain. Recognize your mountain. In this case, it was sickness. It, for some in here, some that may watch or listen, it may be a financial mountain. It may be a relationship mountain. It, 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 the list goes on, but it, I'm saying certainly recognize your mountain, but recognize your mountain for what it is. It's a challenge. It's a character building. It's more than you can handle. It's something you need Jesus to come through. And we need to remember that no mountain is bigger than our God. Our God is bigger. There's nothing that, matter of fact, I read Psalms 18 yesterday on the radio. As one thing I point out, if you read that passage, it says, My God, my horn of salvation, my refuge, my protection. This is David. Sometimes if we're not careful, we think, God can overcome, God can take down that mountain for that person, or I've seen him do it for that person or that family. We begin to take ownership and say, my God can overcome my mountains. Amen? Yeah. Recognize your mountain. Recognize. And in this passage, in this story, the mountain is his sickness. And I'll also mention that mountain is Mary and Martha and Mary and, and their understanding of what Jesus is doing, the disciples, uh, their, their lack of faith. Something to think about is Jesus, and this is one of the signs, Jesus is not caught by surprise. There is, you, if you find it in Scripture, you show me, but no, there's nowhere in Scripture you ever find Jesus. When, when some come, someone comes to him frantically, Jesus, Jesus, he goes, oh, how did that happen? I can't, oh, I can't believe that happened. When you look at the feeding of the 5,000, which that was 5,000 men, and a few weeks ago, uh, uh, between Bobby, Sandy, myself, and a few others, we figured that, you know, back then they had many children, and they had wives uh, sometimes, and, and they could have been 10, 20, 20 some thousand people. But Jesus didn't go, Philip, how are we going to feed these people? He asked him the question, but in itself, there's nowhere you'll find Jesus react. Sometimes, understand this, he'll test us to build our faith, our character, our maturity. Psalm 66, verse 11, you brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. Who did? It wasn't the devil. Now, sometimes we'll make bad choices and we'll cause our own burdens. Sometimes someone else in our life, it could be a married couple, it could be a parent making a bad choice that uh, harms their children. It could be different, but sometimes we put it ourselves, but sometimes God allows it to happen to build us up, to handle the destiny, the future, the vision he has for us. In John 11, verse 4, it says, When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Amen, amen. Secondly, really care. John gave this away before service. The shortest scripture is in this passage. John 11, 35, Jesus wept. Listen, one one thing is that we'll see an example of Jesus. He cared for the woman that he, that he was speaking to, and she had five previous husbands, and she was living with the one that was not, not married right then. And, and uh, you know, we, got, we actually talked about it briefly last week with uh, Dana's testimony. You'll listen to it if you weren't. Catch it all. It is that God, uh, Jesus, had compassion. He wept. And he wept for Lazarus. And I'll say this, he, he weeps over each one of us and he loves us and cares for each one of us. But my little daughter may be uh, going through something or if one of these little children are any age, it might be something someone else ago. Well, that's nothing. That's just a little thing. You know, when our heart hurts, the heart of God hurts and he loves us. So we see here in John eleven thirty five 35 that Jesus wept. He had compassion on on Lazarus, he had compassion on, 
on his friend, and, and these are cohorts in ministry. And, and uh, look at number three, uh, react, John eleven twenty one. 21. Uh, it says, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. React, and, and sometimes if we're not careful, we'll, we'll react to, okay, I'll raise my hand, I'll answer my old altar call. I, I will suddenly admit sometimes God really strengthening me and having to grow, and I've reacted. Either myself or just uh, a 485 can be a kind of a super speedway, and sometimes I get a little frustrated. Uh, but I just, uh, come on, someone else, raise your hand. I think someone else has reacted and been human. And uh, it's okay, just uh, God's growing us, and we won't react the same way in the same situation next time. Amen. And, but when you see Jesus, the next point, well, the next uh, slide, uh, <clears throat> we'll go to the next one. We'll go, we'll look at the zone. But response is every time you see in God's Word, when you look at examples of Jesus, He responded. And when I pointed that one scripture out as we were reading it, I don't know if you noticed, Jesus said, yeah, he listened to Martha. But what did he do? He kept ministering. I'll be, I'll be there in a minute. Imagine, someone comes to you frantically. Man, this happened. I can't believe this. I just, I don't know. I don't. And a lot of people react and try to put out fires. But what did Jesus do? He just kept doing what the Father told him to do. And what do we do in our lives? Yes, we have compassion. Yes, we care. But we do most of all is obey God. What did we say two weeks ago when we were talking about how to fireproof your life and marriage? Is sometimes you got to shut off the computers, the TVs, the cell phone, and uh, and we'll have some time with God, have some time with a friend, or have some time with, with your loved ones, and, and just not be sitting there. And listen, there might be a few guilty in here, hopefully not too many of us, is uh, be at dinner and try to have a few minutes with, with yeah, maybe just yourself or with your family. And next thing you know, the call comes in. Or next thing you know, a text or an email or a Facebook. And we're spending the whole time, the few minutes we have, in peace and quiet, responding or reacting to people. Now, do we want to answer back? Yes. But I'm just saying, for that few minutes, have peace and quiet. Have that time with God. What did Jesus do? He did it in the right time. Now, you'll start in the story. He would have realized it at the time. But right now, I'm going to ask that. I, I actually, it was tough. It was tough. But I actually had to pray. And I said, you know, God, is there, I wonder if Martha and uh, Lazarus are available to come down, be in service this morning with us, and uh, share. So I was able to get Lazarus. Here's Lazarus right here. All right, uh, and uh, he has uh, he has a uh, sheet that we can find in the place. That's what they had in heaven, and uh, he's gonna. Here we go over. Um, find a good place. Ash, we want the camera get this good. All right, he'll be up here. I tell you what, I'll move this. I I got my lines down, Johnny. Uh, Lazarus, excuse me. <clears throat> All right. And maybe the camera guy can take the camera off. There we go. Jerry, you take it off. Oh, actually, we have Martha here. She has a busy schedule. Martha is up in heaven, cleaning heaven a lot of the time. Uh, we know Martha liked to have the house speak in Spain, and she liked her, his, her mansion in heaven speak in Spain. Is that not right? We, we know Mar I mean, those Marthas, they like the place to be straight, organized, and clean. Is that not right? Okay. All right. And she does a great job her and her hubby here. All right. And so we're going to share the story. Oh, let's move this cross. All right. These are all the testimonies. These are many testimonies in heaven, too. I know. All right. But we'll get, there we go. There's Lazarus. Lazarus is sick. I don't, I don't know that yet. So we're going to reenact a little bit of this. And I want to ask uh, our sound guy, can you help me get a wireless mic so we can hear Martha? And uh, I'll talk. Oh, here you look. You got to need the mic. Lazarus does not need a mic. He, he gets uh, wine free today. Amen, amen. Amen. All right. And so uh, <clears throat> right now, uh, you know, I'm playing the part. Guess what part I'm playing, Sandy? 
Well, that's, that's pretty, so it's gonna take you some good acting. I'm gonna have to do some incredible acting this morning, but we didn't have anyone else. Jesus was full, his schedule was full today, wasn't it, up in heaven? Okay, so I had to, he said I could do it today. All right, so. Lord, behold, the one that you love is sick. Come quickly, you must come. You have to come now. You mean, you mean what, Lazarus? Lazarus, your friend, your, the one you love dearly is sick. You okay. must come, you must okay. come. I'll be there shortly, I'll be there in just, just a few moments. Please. Don't okay. tarry. Don't tarry, okay. Oh, Lazarus, I care for him. I, I have a full schedule of Jesus. You know, I got all these lists to do. I, I still have ministry. I'm still, I love Lazarus. So we're going to continue. I am still teaching from the Old Testament. Well, that's what we have right now. And uh, teaching from the, the book of Judges. It, you know Judges, don't you? You know Judges? And, uh, but today we're not judgmental. We're good. We, I can't, I'm going to come soon, die and resurrect you. I'll forgive your sins, all right? And I'm going to do your sacrifice. And, uh, but you know what? Uh, I care for each one of you, for God, for Jesus, came to bring life and life more abundantly. All right? I came. I came to bring life more abundantly. Jesus, right here. I'm Jesus. I love you right there in the camera. And if you need, if you need me, I'm here for you. But you know, I don't know if you've heard this. Some of us have mountains in our life. And we're hearing the heartbeat, the high pitch. And sometimes we're feeling like we're at the end and there's little time left. Maybe we're, we have bills stacking up. How many's ever had a few bills stack up? How many's seen a relationship or, and then what happened? You felt like there's nothing that could be done. It's, you got the, maybe someone got the foreclosure papers. Maybe someone got the last bill. The lights are going off. Maybe somebody got the, the, the a relationship that there's no way it's ever going to be healed. And I wish Martha would come. And, uh, <laughs> Jesus, yeah. why didn't you come? You tarried too long. He's dead. He's dead. The one you Lazarus. love is dead. Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. You stayed away. You didn't come. I begged you to come, and you didn't come. Did Martha, calm down. It'll be all right. It's to God's, to my Father's glory. We'll go see him right now, okay? It takes a few days, but we'll do the days quick here. Oh, Lord, God, I, Father, I just pray for, for Lazarus give him strength. It took a few days, but we are fast forwarding. A few days. All right, they're good, good sound effects, Sandy. Martha, Martha, he stinks. Hey, hey. He smells like death. <laughs> Lazarus! Come forth! Get those grave clothes off. Not these. But, uh, <laughs> amen. Amen. You know what I hey, Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. I want to see this. I want, I want, come here, come here, Lazarus. Now, now stay up here, both of you, because you're helping me out this moment. Actually, you're doing the way. Lazarus. Now, I know even Johnny, but Lazarus, what does it feel like to be alive after being dead? It's wonderful. Amen. 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 Now, I want us to think about that. Imagine being raised from the dead by Jesus. I would think you would be alive to thrive. Matter of fact, I, I, I am expecting Lazarus, but, but Johnny, this coming week and the weeks to come, to be more alive than ever. I'm expecting Martha here, a.k.a. Uh, Judy Rice, to be full of life. 
And I believe in all of us. Amen. Amen. You believe in how many are with you? Well, you believe in that's fine. But I'm going to believe in everyone here, everyone that watches the video or the podcast, is to understand this. Imagine, is there any mountain bigger than being dead for four days, in the grave, stinking up? Does <laughs> uh, she have some you know, uh, clothing? So, okay, uh, stinking up, you know, great, great smell. But can it get any worse than being dead for four days? But shake off those heavy burdens. Shake off that, that mountain and the, the, that, that stinky smell. But it, you're going... Well, I don't stink. I smell pretty good, you know. I look in the mirror, but we can start stinking up with our attitude. We can start stinking up with worry and fretting. We can start getting uh, uh, just bad thinking and, and bad mindset. And uh, I praise God that Johnny is a changed man, but I, I would think there was times years ago, years ago, he had stinking thinking. No more, right? No more. I'm saying the same thing for all of us. I'm speaking to myself too. No more. We're alive to thrive. Amen. 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 So I'm going to give a hand. All right. Amen. Amen. I'm stay up here. Judy Hunter. I'm going to ask them what I did as I was out with my family. I worked 27 hours in my other job between Thursday and Friday. And uh, just all to, that's fine. Do what you got to do. But here's what I want to ask because it's with these between you. And um, I got these bookmarkers, and they're somewhat like Sandy's Marine. It says, where to look when you are weary? It has Psalms 95. You seem too busy. It has different things. So I'm going to ask them to pass these out. And this week, when you're fa facing a mountain, when you're facing a storm, it, it may not have everyone on here, but it has many. I'm going to encourage you to keep this bookmarker with you for at least the next week, maybe longer, but at least the next week, and pull out these scriptures. Oh, you want to help pass out? You want to do these to Grandma Papa? Okay. And, uh, and, and what I encourage and challenge all of us to do is, is to pull this out and look at it. And uh, you can go ahead and start passing it, take one side each. And then what I have, I have a few more. So in a moment when, uh, and Tim, would you mind strong in place? And, uh, oh, th these are for the rest of the people. Actually, you want to help? Do you want to help, Caitlin? Okay. Here's what we're going to do is, is if you would say, I will also give one to someone else in the coming week, whether it's a family, a coworker, a friend, or someone, then, uh, then I have these. I have extras. And I'm going to encourage you to get them up. Get them off the, you want to give, is there anyone to raise your hand so you will do that? All right, here's, I want you to give these two people that raise their hand, Caitlin. Okay? Go look for people with their hands raised. And then what I want to ask you to do, and there's some more up here in case she misses you. So I'm going to pray right now, and if you've been facing a mountain over the last week or so, or if you're continuing to be facing one that's gone a little longer, then I'm going to ask you to come find a place to pray up here. If you want to stay in your seat, that's fine. But I'm going to ask that you come up here and just find a place to pray. If you need to pray for, for repentance and, and forgiveness, then we want to pray for you. If you have anything to need prayer, the next few minutes, let's have an opportunity to go before God. I've gotten stretched over the last week, and I think many of us, but that, that showed me that God's preparing us for greater things in our lives, our families, as a church, and our community. So let's pray. I want to pray, and then we'll have a Opportunity. Maybe someone can turn off at least one lights. Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you, Lord God, for this day and this opportunity. We thank you, Lord God, that you love every one of us. And I thank you, Lord God, that, that there's no mountain, there's, there's no trial, there's no struggle, there's nothing, anything that can that's bigger than you, that you are bigger than any situation. Lord, I pray right now, we pray for those that need physical healing. I, I pray for Grandpa DeVries. I pray for Tim. I pray for my dad. I pray for Sharon. I pray complete healing in the name of Jesus. I pray for Dana and my mom with their eyes, Lord God, that, that you would touch and heal them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for our finances uh, to be increased. 
and everyone here, everyone that's watching the, the video or the po uh, podcast, I pray an increase in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray in our lives, our homes, this is a church. We pray increase in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we love you. And Lord God, we just thank you that we are alive. That we're alive. That we're alive. And Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Find a place to pray for a few minutes. If you want more of the cards, you're welcome to give out. Then uh, go ahead and grab some more. Let me even say, you are currently, or you know someone close to you that is up against a mountain that's bigger than you can overcome without Jesus. I mean, something bigger than you need Jesus to come through for you. Is that you? Just raise your hand. Amen. Okay? This is what we're going to do. I want to pray and, and, and agree with us in prayer for one another. And right after that, we'll have uh, the band with a closing song. Lord, we just thank you. I just thank you for how you love every one of us. That we cannot gain more of your love or lose your love from something we do or don't do, no matter how good or bad, that you love us, period. And Lord God, you just saw each hand that was raised to help the situations, family and finances, just different things that, that you know every detail. I just pray that, that you would come through, that you would. Bring healing, bring the increase. Pray for us as, as a church. Uh, bring the increased finances. Bring the, we pray you would 
grow your church. Grow us to be able to reach more people, to love and care for more people. Grow us as a team and as a and uh, in every area. Lord, I just pray for everyone that asked for prayer just a moment ago that you, Lord God, would answer every prayer need, every situation. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, let's uh, praise the Lord with this uh, going out the door song and uh, have a great start to the week. Thank <laughs> you.